All right. <laughs> One minute in. I know, I know, I know. Most of you are thinking, he said 9 o'clock start time, so we'll be on by 9.30, we'll be on by 10, we'll be on by 11. I know. And that's my fault. What's up, nerds and nerdettes and wee little nerdlings all? It's your buddy Big Johnny G for Two Gun Picks and Presents. Legendary Gaming. <laughs> All right, so yes, I actually got on time. Just made sure, you know, sometimes you just got to make sure you get everything done that you need to get done. Uh, and I got lucky today. But now let's see about this setup here. I didn't get a chance to finalize, do a check on that. So let me see what I can do here without ruining everything. Woo, that was a big camera quake. Need to get my little sandbag down. I'm setting this up. Am I saying I just use my dice bag? <laughs> That's my sandbag for my little camera stand. There. Okay, now. Let's see what this looks like for camera. What are we at here? Let's see. Uh. Sorry, I didn't have this part all set up yet. Checking the camera angles. Okay, that's not bad. You can see a lot of it there. I can tighten it up a little more. Give you guys and gals a better look. And what's going on here? That's good. That's tighter. What do you think? All right, so Iron Helm by Grey Gnome Games. Eh, here are you. Let me get this one up top. You've seen me run a few games of Desolate. Really dig it. Really fun sci-fi horror survival escape exploration resource management style epic game in a tiny box. Uh, so I was really looking forward when I heard that Jason Glover was working on a fantasy version based on the rules of Desolate. Just sort of, uh, you know, reworked a little bit, retooled. So I was really excited. So I uh, was able to get this right away when it first came out. But c'est la vie. I have it now. So this is a very first run through it. To be quite honest, I've only given a once over of the rules. So I want to keep this handy for reference. But since I am quite familiar with this, I, I at least have a general idea of the basics of it. The tool, the dual card, and I understand the twist in this game, depending on whether you choose the card as the first card or, the, or your second choice card will sometimes matter. That seems pretty cool. So the idea behind this game is you are a you are an adventurer and you you're just done. All right, you're just done. You're you're ready to retire. But retiring when you're broke kind of sucks. So you decide, you know, one more last go. I'm find a little hole in the wall somewhere easy that I can solo. I don't have to split the findings with anyone else. And then I'm just gonna retire on what I got. So that's it. That's the basic of the game. That's why you're going in it alone. That's that's the purpose of everything. I I have chosen the uh, alchemist sort of tab. Trappings mean uh, equipment, uh, items, things that you start with. So he starts with a wooden staff and a door wedge, kind of reminiscent of old school D and D uh, first first edition basic D and D. You had the you had the metal spikes. To force the doors open. <laughs> and he has a skill of alchemy. Now, in this game, you, uh, you don't really level up, but you do improve yourself. I can get more skills later on. Alchemy uh, basically gives me two potions to start with. And I have chosen an antidote to remove three poisons when need be. And I've chosen a health potion 
to gain more health, obviously. So here's my door wedge. Here's my staff for combat. My morality tracker. This is really cool. This is an interesting thing that they have going on in the game here. Your morality tracker, depending on if you... Uh, John Curry, what's up? Iron Helm time. Yeah, wish me luck. Like I was just saying, I I barely went through the rules one time already. Got the got them handy here, ready to go. Uh, yeah, this morale tracker, depending on certain things that you decide to do, will move you up or down the morale tracker. I think that's a very, very cool system. Uh, there's, uh, this is the map that I'll be working off of, going through each level. And you could, you could choose however you, you know, whatever you're feeling like. And I was feeling like a dungeon. I was. I, I was feeling like catacombs and, you know, more than, you know, going through an evil temple or something. That's what I see this as, an evil temple. This I just see as, you know, like descent to the depths of the earth. You know, that's what that reminds me of. So, but it doesn't matter which side you, you go through. It's mechanically the same. So we have a skill deck up here. We have trapping deck up here. If I need to go through those for anything. And uh, over here, and I haven't, I have not shuffled these yet. So you're going to be seeing the initial shuffle. And also with new games, there, there's something that I, I like to do uh, with new games. Uh, and that's with, with each drawer, at least for the first, you know, three or four times you're, you're going through and you're drawing a card off the deck, uh, off of a brand new deck. Uh, shuffle each time. Shuffle each time for the first maybe three times. So I'm going to be trying to remember to do that. So here goes the dungeon deck. This is really what runs everything. Uh, this one deck here, this is a permanent deck. This is a, a very static deck, so to speak. The expansions do not add on to this whatsoever. The expansions add on to everything else. They add on to the bosses. They add on to the enemies, the loot, the plots, potions, uh, new characters, maps, but not this. This is the engine that runs everything, and everything else is built around that. And I kind of like that. I think that's, that's pretty cool, and I'm, I'm very interested to see uh, further down the road how that goes. I have the I have the three expansions also. So if this goes fun, maybe I'll, I'll do a playthrough for, you know, for each of them, you know? Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. We'll see how, how far I can uh, I can take Sortab, my alchemist. It'll be kind of fun if he actually survives this and makes it to another one. <laughs> but... But any of my returning viewers and friends know I, I do not have a very good track record uh, soloing games. <laughs> but they're fun as hell, so I keep doing them. Okay. So this game by Great Known Games is ready to go. I'm a character. Dice are ready. Uh, and so let me shuffle this. I said I want to Shuffle these of the cards on camera. I like doing that with the decks. Not saying that other, other uh, you know, YouTubers set things up at all. So I have no opinion on that, but I just know my opinion about myself. And the way I like to do this. And that's why I like to do it on camera. And I think I remember to do it on camera about 90% of the time. <laughs> so this is a, uh, a dual drawer system. Much like the Desolate game is. And I got to check out their other games. I'm curious now to, to check out uh, like Four Tribes and Stonefire. Stonefire, I'm really, really hot to, uh, to try to check that out now. Okay, let's see. There is no cheat card, but if I do remember, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing is the exploration. Yep, draw two cards. Remember that correctly. Oh, wait, I get gold. See, you gotta keep track of this stuff. I got that all right here. That's what I almost forgot. I almost forgot to keep track of my stuff. So I got 12 health. That's pretty cool. For an alchemist, right? It's the closest thing we got to a like a wizard in this game. That seems like a pretty healthy wizard. That's a 12 health. And I got three. I got six right here. And I got another three, four. And another six right there. You know, that that worries me. If if an alchemist starting the game has that much health. Yeah, it does worry me a, a little bit, I must say. And we got our... Uh, oh, yeah, we got the uh, blessings in here. I need to worry about blessings yet. Energy, get 12 energy. 12 energy 
See, now that sounds right. You tell me that, that an alchemist or wizard gets 12 energy. That sounds right to me. Um, as I'm still growing this out here, either the enemies will... What was that, John? Either the enemies will hit hard or that wizard has been spending time at the gym. <laughs> yeah, but even if he is spending time in the gym, you know, is he like really lifting the dumbbells or is it a telekinetic spell that's doing it? Okay, there goes my energy. There goes my energy. See, now this is the reason I, I actually remembered to take a look at, at this here is because I, I just remembered that the beginning of the game you you can spend you can spend gold I get one ration oh man I gotta get some food I've got to get food oh food that's what kills me almost uh, almost every time I lose an unbroken it's it's because of food <sighs> I, <laughs> I say this with love but I hate game systems where I have to manage food. <laughs> Okay, and three gold, three gold. So I can go through the trappings and see if there's anything else I want to buy. Not to be careful, because my staff is already taking up two hands. Uh, this is an accessory. I can carry up to nine. That's what that middle number is, my encumbrance. So let's see. Maybe I can get a... Uh, hmm... Get some robes. Robes would be nice, right? You're walking around this dungeon naked. Must get a little chilly. The pneumonia will kill me before the goblins will. Okay, so that's going to cost me two. So if I get this, I'll probably... Ooh, a torch. Only one. It's like ADD over here. Oh, robes. Ooh, a torch. You may discard this card to reveal both dungeon cards and then... Ch Ooh. Okay, I'll be dead broke. I can't afford a dagger from getting robes, and I really need robes. A circlet would be all three. Begin additional two health when you drink a health potion. A bow is two-handed. I already have a two-handed. Another ration. Oh, what was I just saying that I need food, right? So wouldn't it be stupid of me? Just kvetching about the fact that I always need food in these games and then have a chance to start with an extra food and I don't. Okay, so that looks like I grabbed that money for nothing. And my drinks for, for free. Okay. So, yes, I am going to spend that to get a uh, robe to start the game off with. You may avoid one skirmish per level. That's, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. That goes on my body. As they keep track. Much like the door wedge, this is an accessory. It says it right down here. Discard immediately and gain two additional rations. Okay, so goodbye to you. Get another two of these rations. Now I, I feel a little bit more comfortable going into this. As I was saying before, games where I have to keep track of rations like like unbroken. Uh, or even in or, or or even in desolate, I gotta, you know, instead of rations, it's oxygen. It's the same 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 principle. Oh, I hate having to manage that stuff. Okay, now we're ready to start. Oh, uh, the blessings, because I, I can't know what the blessings are. Because you're not going to be revealed until the end of the game, and you find out what, what you've been blessed with. So let me just get these down. Without, oh, okay, most of them are like upside down anyway. That definitely helps this whole process. And so uh, thematically in the game, when you up, get up to the boss, this sort of angelic divine being appears to you and you're able to then reveal the blessings that you've, you've collected during your adventure so far and see how that helps you. Eh, pretty interesting concept. Pretty interesting concept. Okay, so I don't know what they are. I got them all off to the side. Poison. This game has poison. Oh, that always wrecks me in Forest of Shadow, one deck dungeon. Always does. Okay. So now it's time for the cards. So we're going to put two cards out, and then we're going to choose one to reveal. And since I usually go with the right card first, 
and I have a tendency to lose most games, I'm going to go and reveal this one. Oh, okay, so this is a skirmish, possible skirmish right off right from the beginning. So because this was my first choice card, this top one, number one, is the event I'm going to be reading. Now, if, if I had chosen this first and didn't like it and discarded it and then said, okay, I'll have to take the second card, then I would be reading from this. That's sort of a disadvantage. When you make the choice yourself, it's sometimes a little bit more of an advantage. Uh, John Curry says, either way, the enemies will... Oh, sorry, that was the last. <laughs> I don't know why that popped up again, John. All right. Um, so you draw your weapons and are ready for battle. Draw an enemy card and add the dungeon level plus two to their health. Well, that's good since I'm still at one, so it's only going to be a plus three to their health if I decide to take this. So if, if I pass this card up, I have to take this no matter what it is. And if it's another choice card, I got to take the second one. And that's not going to be in my best interest. But it could be treasure. Could be a shrine. Uh, campsite could be, but that's not going to really do me any good right now. This is the very first turn of the game. So you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into this skirmish. You know, I'm at my healthiest right now. Just walking in. Someone's trying to tell me no. Right? That's what it comes down to. I'm trying to walk in, and they're telling me, no, 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 buddy. This place is not for you. Well, I say to heck with you, pal. All right, so I'm going to draw an enemy card. Now, like I said, I haven't shuffled these yet, so we're going to do a quick little soft shuffle on camera. And uh, the next maybe two after that, I'll shuffle before a drawer. And by then, it should be it should be randomized enough. And yeah, this is the way I shuffle. Got a problem with that? <laughs> Never been very good at shuffling cards. Never, never, never been good. My dad used to try to teach me. I could just never, I could never get it. All right, so I'm going to draw one, and I'm going to add two plus the level of the dungeon, which is one, so that's a plus three to the health. And we have a flying snake. Okay. You gain one poison with the initial damage. Ah! Okay, so that's what's going on here. But that's okay. I don't worry about the poison yet because I do have the antidote for for later. Now, that's going to jump us over to combat. Now, they have a very interesting combat style, if I remember correctly, and that's uh, symbolized by rolling the, uh, the dice and, and subtracting them from each other. I thought that was very, very interesting. It also sounds familiar, but I can't place where from, which is, which is weird, but it sounds like a really familiar uh, mechanic okay so we're done with the exploration we're into combat now so the little heart there uh three is is the health and the initial damage shown in the burst is is one treasure type that we're going to get is zero we're not getting anything at all from this and this is the weakness type so it's showing a frost symbol which uh, means that cold, frost, ice, that is a weakness to them. And I don't have anything with that descriptor on it. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. Mm -hmm. So the health is 3 plus 3. So the health is 6. So we're going to use this to track the health. Boom, right like that. The initial damage, as I read, is a poison. So I'm going to get, unfortunately, one of these poison trackers. Now, these, these are really troublesome because when your poison trackers equal or exceed your health uh, tokens, that's it. You're dead. You're dead. That was the initial damage. So it was important to realize, yes. You roll two six-sided dice and subtract the lower result from the higher result. That's the way, yeah, see, that's what I was talking about. That sounded really cool. So that is, uh, oh, that is one. Yeah, sorry. So I told you, I'm getting used to this too. One damage and poison i forgot to take that away sorry 
one damage and poison. Put that there so I don't forget that I'm that I suck and I've lost health already. <laughs> Oh, no, see, I did that wrong already. I did that wrong already, so. So that's one plus three minus and, uh, and one, so that's going to leave two, plus the one is three. So that's three plus the, uh, plus the poison. Okay, not bad, not bad. Exactly, John. Go big or go home, right? You start the, start it off with a big fight. That's what you got to do. Okay, so they uh, unless, unless and there's only like one card, I think, or one of one effect that lets you get the first attack. I can't remember what that is, but otherwise, yeah. So they always get the first attack unless otherwise noted. But don't plan on that being noted a heck of a lot. So then it's my turn to attack after we've determined health and the initial damage has been set. See, now our attacks are going to be working differently than, than the monsters. Here we go. The monsters' attacks on us. So I have to decide how much energy. See, now, like in Desolate, when you were shooting, you had to decide how many bullets you wanted to spend, and each bullet was, was a die, right? Which I kind of thought was a pretty cool way to, to run that. So this way, uh, it's how much energy that I want to expand and that will be how many dice that I'm going to be uh, rolling for damage. Now, this thing has three health. I'm going to spend two energy. And I'm going to roll two dice. So that's six. Nothing special added to that. Nothing special done to it. Nothing is now. Now, uh, by the way, the enemies, if the enemies roll double, they miss. They miss. Because like I said, you have to subtract for the enemy. So that would be two. The uh, the enemy does damage for you because five and three, 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 that's zero. So just to let you know that for the enemies, that would have been no damage whatsoever. But I did enough to defeat this flying snake. So now I'm going to get to keep this card right here off to the side. And that's a, a death monster. When it's time to determine the boss, the most type that we have, death, fire, or ice, will determine which boss that is going to be. And we can also use these to, to increase our skills later. Uh, three, three monster cards you spend... And you can get a new skill five, and you can get a skill that's different than yours. Like I can only take mind right now. There's also brawn and agility. So if I spent five of these, I could take a brawn or an agility skill. So this is mine right now. It's sort of like my trophy for this battle. Oh, and I completely forgot to add in uh, for my staff. <laughs> I did. That would have been uh, another three damage. I would have only uh, used one if I had remembered that. But that's on me. I'm not going to wreck on that. That was my mistake. If, if you were to wreck on that for yourself in your first game, that's fine. Uh, but me, I'm going to stick with it. That was my choice. I made it. You know, learn from my mistakes. So he is defeated. And that means that we are getting back to drawing. So we're going to put two cards out. I think I'm getting this right so far. I said I only did go through this rule book once yesterday. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the left. Oh, a clearing, clearing. Uh, anything can happen in a clearing. Draw a plot card. Dun dun dun. Or, hmm, I really want to see a plot, don't you? I really, really do. <laughs> I went through them when I, when I first did the unboxing uh, yesterday, but I can't I can't remember what all of them were. There was the wolf, an old lady, a passage, and that's what I'm going to do. You know, goodbye to you. My, you know, don't even look at the cards you discard. This is what I'm going to do: draw a plot card, draw a plot card, and here we go. Give this a quick little shuffle up, and then we'll 
we get to see what our first plot is. And plots advances towards the end, getting to the boss. As you'll see, the plots have eye icons on them. And I gotta double check the number in the rules. I think it's 10. When you get up to 10, that's when you've drawn the attention of the boss. When the boss comes out personally to try to kick your butt. So here goes the plot. Ah, oh, the wolf. That's, that's one of the titles I said. Your eyes meet those of a frail looking wolf crouched in the cover of shadows. It looks like the wolf is starving as it cannot even muster the strength to growl. See, now this is where we get moral choices. So I can feed the wolf or ignore the wolf. If I feed the wolf, take one of your rations and give it to the wolf. The frightened creature snaps at you, drawing blood, but quickly turns to eating your offering. Lose one ration and two health. Why that? If I ignore it, turn away, and leave the wolf behind to fend for itself, move down to one on the morality track. <laughs> uh, but the other one, I get to move up one more on the morality track. And wolves ignore you from now on. Okay, anyone that knows me knows I would not let a wolf starve uh, as long as I wasn't the choice for it not to starve. So I will... I will give up one of my rations. See, I'm glad I bought some. See, that worked out. I'm going to lose two health because it took a ch chomp of my hand as an appetizer. I'm going to get to move up one on the morality track because it helped a wolf. And uh, see, this is, if you look down on the bottom there, that's out of focus. <laughs> it's, there you go. We got, we got two eyes. So there's eight more, eight more eyes. And... And then the boss will be figured out. And that will be figured out, like I said, by the majority of symbols, whether it's death or whether it's ice or fire. But I like the fact that uh, wolves now will ignore me. They're not gonna they're not gonna attack me in this game. Okay, so no need to fight. So we're ready to go for another another drawer. Jason Glover, following along. Oh, Jason Glover, the designer of the game. Hey, what's up, Jason? Uh, yeah, this is my first run through. Please, if I do anything wrong, let me know. <laughs> this time I'm going to go for the right one. I'm going to go for the right one this time. I've been, I've been going left so far. So let me try this, see what this is. Oh, uh, Arrow Trap, like Indiana Jones over here. So if I, if I choose this card... Instead of discarding it for the other one, I'm going to get the top choice. Number one, your curiosity with the ruby-eyed statue comes at a cost. Game and poison token. Hmm. If I uh, if this was the second choice that I went with, there would be two poisons. Hmm. Not digging. Yeah. Oh, who is that? Hello. Hello, Aaron. Yeah. So far, only a couple of rounds in, and I, I do. I think this is a nice evolution on on Desolate, a great game to begin with. I I already have one poison. Uh, the antidote will cure me up to three. But I'm not digging this choice. I'm not. I'm not digging this. No. So here we go. Good or bad. Oh, treasure. <laughs> so this is my second card choice. So down here is what concerns me, concerns us. This chest must have been stocked with goods. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm misreading that. This chest must have been stacked with goods recently. Draw one loot. Oh, this is this is kind of the better one, actually. Draw one loot card and one potion card. Now, when I draw a potion card because of my alchemy skill, I get to, whenever you draw a new potion card, you may draw one extra and uh, pick one to keep and the other to discard. Ooh. All right, so first a loot card. We haven't gone through the loot deck yet, so let's give this a quick little soft shuffle. Oh, no, that doesn't count. All right. I do like the flow of this. Um, not that there's a problem with the flow in Desolate whatsoever, but it seems like there's a little difference I can feel in, in the flow in this. I'm digging it. All right, so I got... Oh, more rations! 
I am not upset with that. So I'm going to get two more rations. This is loot. This is going to go up here for the discard. I'm going to get two more rations. Come on, maybe I can feed some more wolves. Make some more friends. It's going to end up like uh, the uh, World of Five Armies. You know, maybe the dire wolves will come out with my rescue because I fed a bunch of them. I know it doesn't work like that, but still, it's kind of cool to think that way. <laughs> and a potion card. And as I just said, of course, I'm an alchemist. I get to draw two potion cards. And then I get to keep the one of my choice and discard the other one to the discard pile. That one looked out at me. I'll keep that one. And that one it insisted upon itself, as Peter Griffin would say. Let me put this away. Oh, that was a plot I grabbed. Hmm, wrong ones, wrong ones. Anyway, I need two of them to choose one. I'm so excited, I just want to get to the next round. I want to get to the next turn. <laughs> so two and I get to keep one, discard the other one. So uh, health potion, Um, not bad. Oh, ice, sh oh, ice shard, ice shard. I'm going to have to have this readied in my hand to use this as a weapon. Right now, I have my staff in my hand. Discard this card to deal 2d6 damage plus 5 damage to foes weak versus ice. Like that fine uh, snake was. You know, I kind of feel like this would have been overkill against that. Hmm. I have one health potion as it is. This is... Hmm. I'm going to take the health potion. I am going to take that health potion. So I just feel like... I feel like I don't want to die. <laughs> okay. We're going to go with the left card. I'm just saying that right now. Going with the left card. Oh, skirmish. If I choose this instead of discarding it for the, for the next one, the blind one, so to speak, uh, it's only going to add... Dungeon level plus two to their health. I'm still in dungeon level one. So this is going to be a plus three to the health. Um, we're in the middle of a turn, so I can't switch up weapons. Oh, I didn't take the ice one anyway. Uh, hmm. Yeah. I'm going to go right in for it. I'm going to go right in for this fight. Give this another shuffle. It's only had two already. This is still from a brand new deck. Don't want... Any overlaps? So here we go. This is going to be plus three to the health. The health is three on this one, but it's a wolf. There's the wolf. The wolf smells me, realizes I'm a friend. <laughs> so as the card says, wolves ignore you from now on. So, well, unfortunately, I don't get a chance to get any, uh, any treasure or get to keep this for, you know, for the, for the fact that I, I beat it, I won. But at least that's cool. Thematically, I like the whole idea. That's, I'm, I'm digging that part of the story very, very much so. I was like, oh, no. It's Sortab. He's cool. Woof, woof. <laughs> oh, very nice. I'm having so much fun with this game. All right, I'm going to go right. I'm going to go right this time. Ooh. It's kind of psychedelic. Welcome to the Mushroom Groove. Mushroom Groove. You have located a grove of young mushrooms. Gain one ration. Now, I would have been, see, it would have been better in this case if, if this was my second card, my blind drawer. Still, one ration is pretty good. I have four right now. I have to burn one when I get to the when I get to the end of this level. I'm kind of moving that way right now. Oh, and you know how I feel about my I'm gonna stay and pick some mushrooms. That's what I'm going to do. Grab a mush, uh, mushroom. <laughs> Grab a, well, that's what I'm doing. Grab a ration. And then over here with the others. I think everything's going well. Jason Glover, potions can be used without being in your hand. You can use it instead of, oh, okay, I didn't, uh, I, okay, thank you very much. So that's good to keep in mind when I get my next, uh, if, if I had chosen this, this, or I will choose one in the future okay so now let's get to the doors 
One and two. Going left. No, going right. Fooled you. Oh, much. I have no money. I got, I got no money. The one, the one thing I was able to kill so far, I had no money. And I spent my money, so I'm broke. Unless I wanted to sell something. I don't feel like selling anything. Right, so I guess uh, deep in the dungeon seems like a strange place to set up shop. But who are you to question his sanity? You may make a purchase from the merchant. Hmm. Draw a loot and potion cards based on the dungeon level of the shop that you're in. This being level one would be one loot card and one potion card. And that sets up the shop that you're going to be able to buy stuff from. I have no money. Nothing. Dead broke. All right. So I really wanted that merchant. I wanted to see him out. And then I wasn't. didn't even think about it. I was so excited. So excited. I didn't even think about it until... I saw him out, I just wanted it, and then I was like, oh, I already made the choice, and I got no money. <laughs> okay, moving on. Let's see what this is, if I want to take it. Oh, it's a skirmish. I want to take the skirmish. Hmm. I'm still doing pretty good. I need some money. I think, I think it's time for a fight, friends. I think it's time for a fight. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm still in level one. This is a plus two, plus the level, so this enemy. And it'll be the last time. This is the third time I'm shuffling this up. After that, I think it's going to be mixed up well enough. If I'm initially out of the box, first playthrough, I think I'll be good. So let's see. This enemy has a plus three health. It's a wolf. <laughs> it's an undead warrior. Five. So it's going to give it an eight health right now. Initial uh, initial damage, you lose one blessing with initial damage. Well, I have no blessings right now yet. Hmm. Oh, not much I can do, though. I was about to say, I don't like that, but, you know, there's nothing I can do. Okay, so... Oh, wait, there is... You may avoid one skirmish per level. Ho, 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 ho! Dodged him. <laughs> Dodge them, thanks. Thanks to my cool robes. I guess they're they're dark and they kind of blended in with the darkness. I snuck around I'm like a thief. Then I realize I'm not a thief. <laughs> uh oh, last two. Boom and boom. After this, we're gonna be finishing the level and then advancing to the next one. Oh, an ambush or something else. An ambush or something else. Which do I want to choose? Now, according to this, the ambush being the first card, if this is my choice, you catch your foe by surprise and gain the upper hand. Well, I like that. Draw an enemy card and ignore their initial damage. Oh, see, this is what I was talking about before uh, in the first fight. There's some cards that, that they don't get the first attack. And this is it right here. Now, this is my second one. They would be getting the ambush on me. Ugh. So this, I only add the dungeon level to their health. Oh, I like that. I like that. And I do need another fight, and I chickened out on that undead warrior. There wasn't many cards left, and I didn't use my robes yet. I'm going to go with this ambush. I'm going to go with the ambush. Zombie. There's a lot of undead in this place. I've had four encounters, two of them run dead, so I guess that's not totally accurate to say. So no uh, initial damage because this is my ambush on the zombie. My ambush on the zombie. So I am going to spend... He has two, and he's getting one, three. And... Pardon me, my, uh, my wooden staff is going to add three. So as I should have done if I had noticed that the first time I had combat, I'm going to spend one energy. I'm going to roll one of these dice. I have a plus three on it. Whoa, <laughs> talk about overkill. Talk about go for the brain. And then I went for it again and again and again. Okay, so I have two undead so far. Flying snake is considered an undead creature. And I got the zombie. One more and I can get a new 
mind skill if I so choose. Okay, so now I'm going to shuffle this up. Uh, Got to spend a health, if I remember correctly. I think I draw a plot card, too. Okay, here we go. Shuffle the dungeon deck. Feed your character. For every two poison tokens you currently have, gain an additional one. Well, thank goodness I only have one so far. Advance your pawn and draw a plot card. Okay, so basically like everything I just said. Okay, I, I got that right. I remembered it. See, this isn't too hard. Okay, so we're going to shuffle this dungeon deck up. So now, after going through it once, I can see why it was designed this way. I can understand why this this uh, simple, what is this, 16-card uh, deck is, is the engine of the adventure that you're going on and how everything else plugs into it and, and makes each time you're playing different and unique because of the add-ons, so to speak. I like that. But I could also see, you know, the possibility down the road of a standalone expansion thing that would have a separate kind of deck. I could definitely get behind that. Not a hint. I'm just saying I, I could. Just to say that quite matter-of-factly. Now I'm going to lose a health. I mean, not a health. No, I mean a ration. <laughs> the the uh, ration... I only have one, not two poisons, so that's fine. I'm going to move down to level two. This little chasm is. That's so cool. And the plot card. Ooh, plot card. So this will be our second plot card. We have the wolf. Give this another quick shuffle. I'm digging this. Also, I'm just I'm thinking to myself how how far further through uh, you know I'd be flying. I just picture it this way: if, if if you're playing this game and you're not showcasing it, you're not doing your video on it like I am, and you're not speaking your way through it. I mean, this almost almost 42 minutes into it already, I'd probably already at least be into level three, halfway through maybe even. Ooh, the shrine. Yes. In the clearing, you find a towering shrine covered in vegetation. You are overwhelmed by a sense of power just as a gentle breeze rushes past you. We'll gain blessing tokens equal to your position on the morality track. And this big three eyes right there. Boom. Oh, two. That means we're halfway there. We've already got. Look at that. That's already halfway to ten. I'm only one in the morality track because I haven't had a choices, chances to get anywhere else. But I do get one of these now. I do get one of these. Uh, la, 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 la. And I don't look at it. I don't look at it. I just keep it off here to the side. And then if I make it to the boss, they all get revealed to me. And I get to see what's going on. Okay. And okay, oh, and we're back. And so now, now we're going through the next level. I think I got through that all fine. You can also sell to the merchant. Of course, they did not pay well. No, they don't pay well. And I didn't really feel like... Uh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, Jason, yes. Uh, but I didn't feel like selling anything. I was thinking about selling my door wedge, but I, I'm also thinking to myself, if you... I don't answer me on this, Jason, but I'm thinking to myself that if you went to the trouble of putting a door wedge as a piece of equipment, trappings here in this game, then I'm probably going to need it at some point. If I go through this game and I don't need it, then maybe next time I will sell it. Next time I, I, I play the Alchemist. But right now, I, I got I, I want to find out why you put a door wedge in this game, Jason. <laughs> All right, so let's let's draw another two cards here, my friends. Ooh, take a breath. And let's flip this if we want to take this one. Well, this is a skirmish. I've been doing pretty good on the skirmishes. I would not have sold anything either. Ah, see, you and me are of one mind here. I, I, I say that because I don't trust you game designers. <laughs> okay, so that's my first choice. The, the skirmish is going to be plus two. I'm on level two, so that's going to be plus four now. I've been doing pretty good in the battles. My energy is okay. I'm going to take the skirmish. I'm going to take the skirmish. A goblin. 
You may avoid this conflict by spending one gold. Well, I have no gold to bribe this little freak of nature with. So it looks like uh, it's going to be a fight. So his initial damage is going to be uh, one plus... I get that right. For the initial damage and combat. I'm going to roll the two dice. And add one. Well, add, roll two dice, subtract the difference, add one. One point plus one is two. I'm digging this system. I'm digging it. I'm getting used to it. I'm digging it. Okay, so uh, <laughs> one, one, two. So he's going to do two damage to me because I didn't have any money to bribe him with. A lecherous thing. Yeah, he's, not, he's, not, he's not even trying to rob me. He's not even trying to mug me. He just wants, he wants one gold piece. He just wants one little bribery. What a little cowardly, lecherous little thing. But he stabbed me. He got me. He shanked me. So it's it's a, it's on me regardless. Now I'm going to spend... He has two health. I got a three. I'm going to spend one energy. You got a plus three on this. One. Um, one still counts for damage, right? It's not like a miss-miss. It's not like a crit miss. Uh, so that's one plus three, four. He has been smoted. <laughs> okay, that's that's there's a lot of undead. I have a funny feeling that's gonna be my boss. Get rid of this. I'm gonna flip over the left one, see if I want to take this choice. Oh, ambush. Oh, it's always good when you get the, uh, this is a first choice. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Catching my foe by surprise, off guard, having the upper hand. All I have to do is just add the dungeon level to their health. Oh, the goblin. Uh, one gold. I forgot. He does have one gold. You see that symbolized. See the ones didn't have right down here. So I do get one gold for that goblin. I almost forgot that. Okay, let's put this away. I'm going to add two to the health. Oh, a skinkling. Very reminiscent to the old school kobolds when they were more little reptile lizard dragon men than, or, or dogs, dragon dogs. All right, he's a possible goal too. I can't remember that. I can't forget that. Uh, when the skinkling successfully hits... Gain one poison token. Oh, man. Oh, three is the staff's cost. What am I reading here? Add an additional three damage to all oh, potion attacks. Oh, that's what I read wrong. Potion attacks. Thank you, Jason. Oh, no wonder. I thought it was a little bit easy for an old alchemist to be hitting everything with the staff. Hmm. Okay, moving forward, too late to retcon. Uh, but this guy, I'm getting the surprise, so no initial, no initial attack or damage from the skinkling. So I, uh, he has one health plus two for the level, giving him three health. I'm going to spend two energy. Roll two dice. Five, which is enough to put him down. I'll gain a gold. Okay, got this fight right. <laughs> and another undead. Huh. So now moving on. Gonna look at the right card. Uh, clearing. Yay. Ooh, get the plot card. Get the plot card, right? Should I? Should I? Yeah. I want the plot card. I'm going to shuffle this up one more time. Actually, it doesn't even matter to shuffle this up, does it? Because it's not like there's sets of things like I have to go with like three healing potions all in a row because I didn't shuffle it. Just realize that. Good play on words, right? The hid in. Hid in. <laughs> Love that. That's clever. You smell roasting meat. 
and hear the sounds of laughter and clanking dishes. Of all the places to find a secret tavern, you enter the small door and are met with friendly gazes. Eat and rest by the fire. Pay one gold for a meal and gain two health and one energy. Only once. Or I can gamble. Hmm. Spend one gold to gamble. I'm not, I'm not feeling the whole gambling thing. But I will spend one of my two hard-earned gold to secure a room. Get back two health and one energy. Like so. <laughs> and this puts it, my friends, at seven. At seven of ten. It sounds like a time. Like the time of doom. <laughs> so there's, there's a... Well, I would say one in three chance, but I don't know what the exact percentage of differences between one, two, and three eyes are. So, without knowing that, I will just say there is a one in three chance that the next plot card could initiate the combat with the boss. And uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so you get some more stuff. But it is what it is. And I'm going to go right again. See what this is first. Oh, the labyrinth. I have enough food to spend. Surely your cunning will see out of this wizard's maze. So this is my first choice to discard one ration. If you have no rations, you lose three health. Oh. Oh, so I missed that. The first green symbol means that you can draw a loot card or take another gold. I'm going to grab a loot card. That's what I missed. Okay. And also with this, I don't think there's a lot of multiples or doubles. So let's just see. Loot. Loot. Field guy. That seems appropriate for, for, my, for my mental character. Gain one additional ration whenever you enter the mushroom grove. It's costing me one to carry it, but I'm still within my nine. So I got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This has me at a six of nine. That's the Borg designation. <laughs> I wanted to do that maze. I wanted to do that maze. I'm going to see if I want to do the left one first. Let's see. Should I? Let's see. Okay. The merchant again. Well, I have one gold this time. I'm on level two, so I put out two loots and one potion. Maybe I could some, sell some stuff, too. I could get two for the field guide. I can get two for the field guide. Let's sell that. Hmm. I got one. Uh, you know, look at the four rations and I wish it was five or more <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to my field good I'm gonna I'm gonna bypass the merchant I'm gonna bypass the merchant I'm not gonna bother I don't have anything here that I need to do with him so let's see what this is I have to do this one now oh it's the arrow trap oh two two is the bottom choice your greed has you walking blindly into a storm of arrows Oh, great, great, great. So I'm going to gain two poison tokens. So now at the end of this level, I will be taking, uh, was it more damage for every two? You get screwed at the end of the level. No, no, not three. Don't rush me. Two. There for now. <laughs> Yes, Aaron and John, he has played it once or twice. <laughs> and it kind of shows, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so the arrow trap was not my most Indiana Jonesy move. I'm going to take a look at this one first. Oh, an altar. 
Sometimes a sanctuary is found in the least expected place. You drop at the altar and pray for blessing or healing. Um, if I want to take this, if I want to take this, I only have one blessing so far. I'm getting close to, even though it could be one plot away, I'm thinking it's going to be two cards away. I'm getting close to the, I need some more blessings. I know that. Health, I've lost five, five already of my 12. So is that seven? Seven? Seven I got left. Mm hmm. But you can get heals with blessings. I have a healing potion. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got a healing potion. Why is this even a thing? <laughs> Why is this even a thing? I'm going to finally grab this one here. Take a blessing. Had to do that one. Had to. Had to do that. It was not a choice. Uh, between turns, I'm going to use one of my two health uh, potions. I'll get a four. All right. Or if I get rid of that. Okay, I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling that now. Okay, that was a good call. All right, getting close to the end of level two here. Let's see. Do I want to do this one? Do I? Do I? It's a skirmish. I get a little bit of an advantage. I just got health back, right? I just got some health back. Yes, my antidote. Oh, yeah, before the end of the round, right? Which will be uh, next turn. <laughs> Which we're creeping up on. I can feel that. I can feel the poison starting to burn my my system and my veins a little bit. Not quite. It's getting there. It's getting there. I really want to take this fight. I really do. You know, so the further down we go, right, the further down we go, we're going to be adding the level to the monster's health. So I almost feel like it's it's worth it to take more fights early on than it necessarily is later on. And I think that's circumstantial because you don't know what kind of equipment you're going to have later on. So, yes, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. I really wish I was an ambush instead of a skirmish. Oh, another one of these idiots. <laughs> okay, but he is gonna get the uh he's gonna get the initial the initial attack on me. Well, you know what? I could buy this guy you off. Uh, darn, I could buy this guy you off. I kind of want to. Oh, then I won't get the loot. So I do get one. Do get one loot. Uh, well, he he attacks me either way first. That doesn't. Uh, so two fives. That's three. Three damage he's going to do to me. He has two plus level two four health going on. Well, let's take that from here. Thank you. Two, two, four. I'm going to spend two, two energy. One, two. I'm going to roll two dice. Seven. Two plus two, four. Like the overkills. Like the overkills. So I'm going to get a loot, and I'm going to get a gold. Loot card. I already mixed these up enough. An Iron Helm. <laughs> the game title. I got the game title. So you get like extra kudo points for that or something. Subtract one from both initial damage and counter strikes. Hmm, headpiece. I have room for a headpiece. Excellent. Excellent. Digging that. Uh, level two. No, I have not used the robes level two yet. Because I actually I've wanted the fights. I've wanted the fights because I wanted to get stuff. Hmm. I'll check 
this one. Skirmish again. Skirmish again. I don't have to use the robes just because I have them. I want to get stuff. My energy is getting low. My energy. See, I'm keeping a track on my health. My energy is getting really low. Can avoid a skirmish. Oh, I could just avoid the skirmish like this. And see what's going on. Treasure! See, that was smart. Treasure! So this is two, so I'm going to draw one loot card and one potion card. And I get two of these and get to choose and discard the other one. Okay, fine. Now, uh, there's no, like, class limitation to weapons in this game. So even though I'm this old alchemist, I could still use a longsword. Yeah, die results of six, deal an extra point of damage. Yeah, I would not mind having that equipped, I think. Now, which one of these two potions do I want to keep? Holy water or a sparkle bomb? Well, odds are it's going to be an undead creature, so I will discard the sparkle bomb. And now let's see my weight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, ho, 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 ho. you always got to keep track of encumbrance. So I will have to discard something. Oh, wait a second. I have to use the antidote. I have to use the antidote. I think I should have done that before I started this combat. And that will get rid of uh, three, which is all my poisons. And that also opens up a slot so I can take the holy water there. But I have to remember, I am at my, my max capacity for, for stuff. Unless I get like a sack. I did think I saw a sack or a bag or something in that full list and the cards. And now we're at the end of this level. Another quick shuffle. Now, how many of these guys I got here? I got five of them. So I can get any skill. I can get my I can get a mind skill which would be three. Or if I spend the five of them, I can get any skill. Gotta spend the food. Herbalism. I think that'll give me uh, an extra energy when I camp. Yeah, but that didn't even come up so far. Praise. Selling goods to the merchant, earn two gold instead of one. When you're buying from the merchant, it's half price rounded up. Divinity, whenever you gain an energy, you may convert it to health. I wish I was the other way around. You gain two blessings when you choose to pray at the altar. And uh, this is from an expansion. The Hawking at the beginning of each level. Roll D6 to see what your bird finds for you. Interesting. Okay, so if I decide on one of these, it's going to be all five of my points. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I like the six cent thing. Once we're dungeon level, you may either avoid an ambush or reveal both dungeon cards and choose one to reveal. I guess that you would uh, do either one of them as the one choice, then I'm guessing. With the six cents. I don't have an axe. See, dodge. Gain one less poison damage from arrow traps. Well, arrow traps come up twice on me. Once on each level so far. Shadow with a dagger in your primary hand. You may deal d6 damage before taking any initial damage during phase one of an ambush. That's nice. That's nice. Dual wield. Parry. We have them to block all initial damage with your primary weapon. Oh, if you roll a one, your weapon breaks. <laughs> I like that. 
Berserk, shield block, conceal. Another way to avoid a skirmish. Archery, when using a bow, you maybe I don't have a bow. I'm thinking of spending all five for the six cents. That's what I'm thinking about doing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about doing. So I can, uh, once per dungeon level, I can avoid an ambush. So I got this, I can avoid a skirmish with the robes. My six cents, I can avoid an ambush. Or I can check both cards out. Okay, I like that. These are considered spent. They'll still count towards the final boss, which I'm quite sure at this point is just going to push everything right towards undead. Now, moving to the next level, level three. Fights are getting tougher. Fights are getting tougher. Let's see what this is first. Skirmish. I'm going to pass it by for right now. I'm going to pass that by. I have to do this. Skirmish. Of course, of course. Right? Yeah, sure. So I'm on level three, plus four to the health is seven. Oh, there's no runaway option? Yes, there are the robes. I'm going to use my robes right away because I do not like those odds whatsoever. So thank you, robes. You know what? Just to remind myself, I'm going to put them upside down. Oh, pardon me. It's getting a little dry in the nerd wasteland. Okay, so I saw the option of avoiding an ambush this level, too. Let's take a look at this one first. Arrow Trap. You need to do, you place a card at the end of the level plot. Oh, that's right. I forgot the plot card. Remember that the first two levels, I forgot the plot card. All right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn it. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, the Traveler. The Traveler. A cloaked figure approaches you. You place your hand on your weapon, fearing a conflict. However, the old man reveals himself as a cleric and makes a gesture of peace. He places his hand on your shoulder and whispers to himself. Gain either health or energy equal to your position on the morality track. Well, I'm going to take energy, obviously. That's going to add another two. Which is nine. So the next plot card, the end of this level, or if something happens for me to bring a plot card out earlier, is gonna be the is gonna be the fight. <laughs> okay, so uh, I got one on the morality track. So I'll get one energy back. There we go. Thank you for reminding me on that. So uh let's check this. Oh yeah, that's right. This is the arrow trap. That's what I was doing. I can avoid. That, but I have to do this. I'm sick and tired of seeing these arrow traps. Every level, I'm running into that arrow trap. Altar. Oh, okay. I'm going to grab me a blessing token. That's what I'm doing. So I got three blessing tokens now. These are all getting on top of each other. There we go. Hmm. Which one would you take? <laughs> of course I'm taking the treasure. Gain one gold. Now let me run into a merchant. Two. Ambush! But this is ambush in my favor. So why would I use my sixth sense for this? No, 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 no. I am uh, I'm gonna take that ambush. This is a fight I prefer. I only get to add the dungeon level to their health. Not plus two or plus four. Would have been plus four if this was the second choice card. Oh on dead archer. Initial damage. Also, you may not defend against initial damage. 5-2, so that difference is going to be 3 health I've just lost. Nine, three, oh, I got my helmet. Subtract 1 from both initial damage. So that's 2. 
Close to my helmet. That's only two that I've lost. Yay, helmet. Oh, wait. No, he gets no attack. Oh, no. This is a one ambush, which is my favor. My favor. My favor. Reverse retcon. So it's my attack first. He has four plus three, seven. Seven. Uh, I get to reroll six. This said... Die result of six deals an extra point of damage. So I'm going to take two energy to roll two dice. If I get a six on either of these, it's plus one. Oh, okay. So it is. So six, three, nine, ten. More than enough damage to take out the undead archer. Again, undead. You guys saw me shuffle these cards. First three enemy encounters I had to take out of. So that's uh, going to be one gold. Because, you know, they're skeletons. They don't have pockets. And things kind of fall through their ribs a lot. So he only has one gold. And I'm going to get a loot for this. Rations. More food. And that's uh, two. Wait, no. Am I looking at it too fast? You may discard this card to gain, regain two energy. See, I did. I looked at this too fast. Yes, please. Thank you. Needed that. Definitely needed that. Okay, so that ambush was definitely in my favor. Yep. Oh, wait, no, but this does say initial damage cannot be defended again, so I will end up taking that two damage. That's why I did that. So this is another problem I have. The games get so fast, I start getting so much into them. Little things like that. I jump over, I miss sometimes. So, at least I caught it. At least I caught it. Anything I want to do here? No. Nothing I need to do here. And check this out. Skirm, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass that by right now. I'm telling you. And the merchant. Hmm. So I'm on level three now. So that's two loot and two potions. You know what? I'm gonna set that up. I'm gonna set that up. Two loot and two potions. Oh, these are expensive. Five, five. Don't have five, I have four. Two potions for holy water. And also, I'm at my capacity. I have to remember that. I would literally be having to give something up. Don't want to give up my health potion or my holy water because I'm betting dollars to donuts. The boss is going to be undead. And I'm going to need my health. Oh, there's... No, I'm over. Damn it, I'm over. Am I two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? No, okay, I am at nine. Mm, so I would have to get rid of something. At this point, I might get rid of that door wedge for more holy water. And I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because it is definitely looking that undead is going to be what I'm going to be encountering as a boss if I make it to the boss. So I want as much holy water as I can get. These loot cards over here. One, two. Take two more turns after that, and then the level ends. Plot card comes out. Let's see what this is. Do I want to do this one first? Ambush. Yes, 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 I do. Oh, and uh, yeah, no, that was. I did not get my loot for the undead archer. I took the gold, didn't get the loot. Shield. I can't even carry this. I already passed up the merchant. I'm not willing to get rid of my. Holy potions are healing. 
Get rid of my fuel gap, but that's only one. Mm. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. That's not worth it for me, I don't think. Let's go over here. I'm going to take that ambush. I'm going to take it. All right. So no initial damage. Because I am ambushing the fish man. Looks like a cow a toe. Descent to the depths of the earth. Nice. In one rasher and you defeat the fish man. Fish, yummy. Mm. <laughs> so it's only going to be plus the level, which is three, six. That's nine health this fish man has. And I first realized something I was reading wrong in the cards. Doesn't matter to what we've been doing yet, the bosses. It's these symbols, not that. This is the symbol of the core set. That's what that is. Wow, well, just took me an hour and uh, 15 minutes to figure that out. <laughs> but okay, so uh, my fight against the fish man. Nine health, huh? Get a plus one to any six that I roll. Two, three would, I feel like three would definitely, definitely win this for me. I'm going to go with three. One, two, three. Damn it, no sixes. But that is exactly nine. Which is six plus the level three, which is exactly what it was. So I'm going to gain a ration because, well, fish yummy. I'm going to get the check loot card. Oh! Yeah, so now I got to fight my loot. <laughs> yes, I know. I wish I could guard the campsite card. Okay, but let's uh, move over here. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> but he does get the surprise on me. But I may avoid this conflict by spending one ration, which I will happily do instead of having this mimic chew my face off. But now, question. This goes, yes, this would go in here because that was a combat. Okay. Answered my own question there without going to the rule book. No, I actually haven't looked at the rule book since about the second or third round. A little help online from, <laughs> from the game publisher. You can also spend a ration for one energy between turns. That is sort of wasteful. I did forget that. Uh, as you said, as I was reading that, I remembered, but. Uh, I did forget that, yes. Uh, and I don't feel that that's, that's all that great right now either. All right, two more than, uh, than a plot. And, that, and whatever the plot is, we'll put this because we're at nine. We're at nine. Certified desk driver. Awesome to see this game get some love. Very fun. It sure is. Sure is. My first playthrough, I'm so digging this game. I want to play this more and more. I want to play it off camera too, so I just like can fly through it. <laughs> but I also uh, look forward to playing on camera. I got the three expansions, so I can always deliver one of those to screen. But okay, let's see. You got two more, two more, and then and then that's it. Two more, and that's it. Uh, I'm gonna look at this one. Oh, good, an ambush again. Ambush again. Yes, I kind of really, 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 really want to do this ambush. But every time I pick one of these ambushes, I, I could be getting rid of like the clearing or something. Mm. But I'm dungeon diving for a reason, so I'm going to take the fight. And the ambush one puts it in my favor. A wraith. Initial damage and counter strikes both steal one blessing. Oh, no! No, no. 
Oh, and this is a skirmish. I already used... No, this is an ambush. Once per dungeon level, you may either avoid an ambush or reveal both dungeon cards. Can I avoid an ambush after I've already revealed the enemy? Because if I can, I will. I don't want I can't afford to lose a blessing before I go into the fight. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to use my sixth sense to avoid this ambush. Because I cannot afford to have a blessing stolen. Now, after this, this will be a plot card coming up after this. When the game comes up the divine visit yeah so some of these could be health could be no oh, i don't have any poison mm, all right well let's just do this let's just do this and see what happens see that's a problem a game like this you can you can you, you can you can brain lock you can freeze up just tr playing the scenarios out in your mind and at some point you just got to say what is it let's do it oh the mushroom grove and i still have my book i still have my book okay so my book will give me an extra ration an extra ration kind of like that this is first choice, so I'll only gain one. So with the book, it'll give me two. But you know what? The fight is coming up. Because after this, it's the end of the level. I'm going to have to put out a plot card. I already have nine. So no matter, even if it's a one, boss fight is coming up. Do I, do I need rations? No, I don't think so. Not that I remember anything in the rules from. Looking at them a day ago for the first time. So I'll definitely do this. Ah, the labyrinth. What was I just saying? What was I just asking? Do I really need rations? Hmm. Okay. Uh, so this is my second choice. So discard two rations. There's three health for each ration you cannot discard. Well, I have three left. I'm going to have to burn one at the end of the round. I think I might have missed last time. Hmm. Okay. Now we uh, got to shuffle these all up. I made a few mistakes. That's obvious. But for a first playthrough, one read of the rules, I, th I think I'm doing pretty good, all things considered. I'm going to spend my food, my ration. Uh, the plot card. And then anything else before the plot card. Um, no poison. So, yeah. Right level. We'll be here at four. Uh, no, so looks like right to the plot. Hmm, we'll do with this. This nothing yet. Okay, plot, 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 plot. Again, too many, too many choices. I'm trying to figure out all in my head here. <laughs> oh, Jason Glover, thank you. you. Say I'm doing great so far. Thank you very much for the vote of confidence. I'm loving this game. It, it's it's helping me get through it a little bit. This game does run rather smoothly. Okay, the old woman. You hear a moaning sound from the shadows and discover a lost old woman. She is frail and mutters on about losing something in the darkness. Help her escape the dungeon. You can spend a good deal of time working your way back out of the dungeon with the woman. Soon you are at the entrance and she turns to you and blesses you for before leaving. Lose one ration, which I don't have. So I would lose health, I believe. Or maybe that's not an option since it's not listed here. 
Game one, busting token, I'm up one. Leave her in search. So I'll move back down to the morality track, putting me at zero. I gain a random treasure. Um... Health potion. Well, I don't have any any rations left, so I don't have a ration to give her. I'm running low on energy. I simply can't. I would love to help this woman out. I would love to help her get out of this place. I would love to get the uh, extra blessing, move up on the morality track. But... As is, I've said, always my case in games like this where I have to manage food or oxygen. I'm at the point now where I got nothing. So I literally cannot help this lady. So I'm going to have to leave her and continue my search instead. And that's going to put me at 11. My morality goes back down to zero. But I gain a random... Treasure. Scale armor. Subtract two from the initial damage. Ooh, and counter strikes. Cannot use the conceal or shadow skill. Ooh, my helmet is two. I can get rid of my field guide. That'd be three. All right. If I discard those. Just drop them at my feet. Put on my scale armor instead. Uh, use a health potion. So I'll get four health back. I think that's I think that's all I can do at the moment. Okay, so now now we're at two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven points worth of plot cards. Now that means that the boss will be determined. So let's oh wait. I have three. Was there a mental skill that was worth it? For three, for the final fight. Trappings. This is mind, mind. Apprentice, herbalist, and uh, divinity. I don't see how any of that helps me in the middle of the, uh, Jovenstein joining us a little late there, brother. How you doing? <laughs> I don't see how any of those are going to help me for the end fight. And, uh, it's only actually, this doesn't, does this see what did it even count? Yeah. Well, because it's still a monster. Still experienced, so to speak. But anyway, so let's see what the majority is here. Well, earlier on, it was looking undead. Let's see. Cold. Fire. Cold. Undead. Cold. Fire. Oh, it's going to be cold. I was wrong. My prediction was wrong. Two and two for fire and undead. But we had a lot more. We had four. We had four for the cold monsters. So now I got it. Get out the bosses. The bosses. The characters, skills. Should have pulled them up to the side. Here we go. Bosses. So for the initial game, you get three bosses. One for each. So we're going to have the Lurker. Behold that lurker, my friends. 
Uh, if it was fire, it would have been the Naga. And undead, surprise, surprise, it would have been the Lich. Okay, so we are fighting the Lurker. So this is what's going to kill the old alchemist. <laughs> Here I was building up holy water, because I honestly thought that's the way it was going. I oh, misread that. Misread that information. So attacks from the Lurker, ignore defense bonuses, gain from shields or bucklers. Thank goodness I do not have a shield or buckler. It's all coming from my scale armor. But the schmuck has 22 hit points. So let's uh, set this up. This could represent 22, right? 12 and 10, 22. That'll represent his hit points. Wow. Wow. Five on his, on his damage. Don't like that. <laughs> He's going to have a couple of treasures. Okay. Now, end boss fight, I believe, is the same as the regular fight. I believe. Oh, my divine moment. Oh, okay. Oof, yeah, my divine moment. So let's see. So the divine moment. Moments before you must face off against your vile foe. You will be visited by an angelic being that will allow you to flip over all of your blessing tokens that you have gained and reap their rewards. Tokens with red hearts and purple energy icons will garner you health and energy. Tokens equal to those uh, shown. The green hearts allow you to remove all of your poison tokens. So what do we have? Health, health, health. I really wish I had gotten energy back. I was kind of banking on, on at least one of those being some energy. I only needed one health to max out, so those blessings are kind of a curse. Okay, yeah, that's all my lost energy. Hmm. I got like one big strike, two medium strikes with a small strike or three small strikes. Holy water was a bad choice. Man, my sword is only really helping me out unless I roll a six. So how many rounds do we want to put this death pool at <laughs> for, for the old alchemist? For sore tab. Sore tab is not a sure thing. Not the way I played him. But, well, we're going to have to go through this anyway. So the uh, so the initial damage, the initial damage that he's doing. It gets added to the uh, five. One, six damage. That was the biggest hit this old man has taken so far. Which uh which was half his half his health right there. One shot. Boom. Holy hand grenade. I know I misplayed it. I I, I honestly thought I was miscalculating it. I honestly thought it was gonna be it was gonna be the lich. I thought it was gonna be the undead boss. That's why I was holding up on the holy water. Holy water's not gonna do anything against the lurker. Oh, no, they do do damage to anything, right? I misread that, too. And my armor's going to protect me from a few of that damage. I got to remember that. Uh, no, so this will do... Let me discard this card to deal 2d6 damage. Plus 5 damage to the undead. Okay, that's... That'll be better. <laughs> that'll be better. Okay. Um, this is track 2, so I'm getting 2 back. Because of my scale armor. Now, I will use hand grenades of Antioch. 2d6 damage. That's five. Knock down one die halfway. Okay, better than I thought I was going to do with that first hit. But now, which hasn't happened before, because these little minion guys, I was, well, after the first round or two, when I... Figured it out. I, I was doing using enough energy. I was knocking these guys out with one hit. And now we have counterattacks back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that is going to suck. Because now that means if I 
no, this card, that means five, because that's the five right there. Is. This is the base damage your foe deals when they attack you if they successfully strike. So remember, if it's a double number, there's no strike. One is the difference. Six points of damage. One. Oh. Four points of damage. Two, three, four instead of six, thanks to my armor. And my other, my other holy hand grenade for another 2d6 damage. Uh, not as impressive this time. Four. He still has 13 damage. This could be it, my friends. This could be the end of Sortab. Until he gets raised by one of his friends and goes out on another adventure. You know, this is probably like the 118th time this guy has done this and he just keeps dying and his friends just keep resurrecting him. Because that's where all his money went from his earlier adventures was he went to this resurrection bank fund. So he just keeps going out and he keeps dying and they just keep resurrecting him. Yeah, it's kind of like a joke. He's like, you know, the joke of the town now because of that. But everyone just laughs. Let him go do it. He'll be resurrected. He'll be fine. Let the old man have some fun. <laughs> and... uh not looking forward to this hit. Well, he could roll doubles and miss me. That'd be amazing. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> Sweetly. No, 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 no. Oh, what was this down at one? Uh, whoa, wow, wow, wow. More blessing tokens than I thought there. <laughs> oh, certified desk diver. This is my first time watching your channel. I'm enjoying it by listening to your stuff while I'm at work. Very cool. I'm so glad you're enjoying my channel. I uh, I have a lot. I have a little bit of fun. You may notice I have a little bit of fun doing these. <laughs> Shogunstein, thank you for that. Very good channel. Thank you so much. John Curry also giving me a shout out. Wow, thank you. This is like my, my best Friday ever. <laughs> it really is. Especially since I dodged that. Amazing, amazing. Um. Oh, I wish my six center robe would help me out here now, but they don't. They don't. And I haven't rolled a six. Did I miss? I don't think I did miss. Uh, miss me rolling a six. Because then I get an extra damage because of my sword. But I have nothing left, so I have to rely on my own power, which means this is this really is about the end, my friends. I'm gonna just roll. Uh, so he's got thirteen. You know what? I gotta go big, right? He's got 13. If I roll three dice, I could take him out. Sword tab may not need that extra resurrection. Remember, if I roll a six, any six I roll, I get a plus one. This is it. This is the last of my energy. Exactly, John. All in. All right, ready? This got to be a good roll here. Oh, I need 13. Or even just like 11 with a couple of sixes? Not enough. Not enough. Not enough. Six turns into seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh! Eleven. He's got two hit points left. And the odds of him rolling another double to miss me are so slim. Oh, my God. Right down to the wire. Oh, and I got nothing. There's nothing. No skills, no items. There's nothing else I can do. I added the plus one. I did. I added that plus one. Oh, like both of us are like, well, I'd say we're both on our knees, just like half energy slapping each other, but he doesn't really have knees. I guess I'm just like finger poking him in the eye. Oh, okay. I've been putting it off long enough. He has to roll. I could be laughing all night, folks. <laughs> all right, so if he gets doubles, I'm going to scream. I mean, no, I'm going to scream if he gets doubles. Oh, I almost screamed. I almost screamed. I thought that was double six again. <laughs> so I got three health left. He just did eight damage to me. Sword tab gets eaten, and the lurker heals up. Oh, 
This was a nice ride. I was digging this. Okay, a few mistakes early on in the game. But like I said, this is my first time playing. Read the rules once. I think I did a pretty good job. Jason Glover thinks I did a pretty good job. Shogun Steen always thinks I do a good job. You're a little biased there, buddy. That's one reason why I love you, though, man. Uh, <laughs> but that's it. That's it. Oh, it was so close, John. It was so close. Oh, Walker video. I feel it. Oh, I know. You, you summed it up right there. Ugh. Oh, uh, getting the lemon juice in the eye. Oh, I just, oh. Even if I did, you see, I did, I did. I, I, I pissed in his eye a little bit, but he had all these other ones that he was able to see me with, so it didn't really help me. <laughs> I had a lot of fun playing this. Oh, so it's have almost made it. That the old, the old alchemist almost did it. Uh, a couple of wiser choices I would have made, but otherwise I think I played a pretty good game. I made some pretty good choices. I think I made more good choices than bad choices. And I'm not talking about like mistakes in the rules I made, just in, in choices in general for the gameplay. This is nice. I'm definitely going to have to get a couple of the 20 sided Warriors to sit down, uh, do playthroughs with this as well, because I want to get their opinion on this. And then we'll all talk about it and let you guys know what we think. But this is a lot of fun. You uh, Let me know if you guys want to see. Uh, I, I definitely have the other three. I have the three, right? We could do... Uh, we can do the Warren and Despair next time if you want. That's very cool. I'm always open to suggestions, my friends. So thank you, everyone, for watching. Walker Video said, this game is seriously tight. I need to bust mine out. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm glad watching me play this. Put in a little fire in your butt there for that. Certified Desk Game, you had a good time. Thank you very much for saying that. Woo! All right. I'd watch another run-through of this for sure. That's what John Curry said. Jason Glover says, you did well. Potions are key because of energy being... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that might have been one of the things where I could have managed a little bit of my potions. But, but actually, I'm glad. I'm glad I didn't notice. Uh, I'm glad I didn't notice that I could have used these any times and just do the extra damage because then I wouldn't have had them for the Lurker and I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have come so close to winning that game. Literally, I mean, literally one roll away. One roll away from winning or losing the game I was. So that was awesome. This built up a certain level of tension and anxiety that I think was at a fun level before getting out to, you know, the really crazy level. Uh, it, it, it was just enough there to make this game, make this game fun. Keep me, and I think some of you watching also, uh, a bit on the edge of the seat. And when a game does that, that is that is definitely the sign of a great game. So I had so much fun with Jason Glover's Iron Helm. Uh, he also has, you know, you've seen me play a bunch of times. I've done a few playthroughs of Desolate. On the channel as well. Uh, that's a great little game system, and uh, and I just uh, I just talked about uh, yesterday. I just did a I just did a uh, a gaming radar because I found out he has a few games. I, I've never really heard of him before. Desolate, I have to admit. And I was just reading up about his game Stonefire, and it got me really hot. So I did a gaming radar on that. So go check out Gray Gnome Games. All right, definitely go check them out. They have uh, they have some great stuff. Uh, that Jason Glover has put out with his company over there. And these uh, these games are all printed up by Game Crafter. And I think they did a great job. I think the you know, one thing I got to say about the components, so I noticed that my, I was getting a little um, like ink marks off the side of these things. You know, I was noticing. It's not a big deal. I don't really care. Uh, but I, that was the first time I ever actually had that phenomenon <laughs> happen. Oh, yeah. See, right. So, but that's all right. Not a big deal to me. But no, otherwise, Game Crafter does some pretty good stuff. I enjoy uh, the games that I have gotten from them before. And uh, I like the quality. So this is a good game. It's a fun game. If you're looking for a one-player game, uh, so like a one-player fantasy nerdy gamer, you know, solitaire kind of thing, this is definitely in that category. This is definitely in that category. Uh, as well as, like I keep saying, I keep pushing because I love it, uh, Desolate. Jason Glover says they were laser cut. Oh, I'm good laser cut. That's probably the burn then. That's why probably it's not ink. Uh, that's probably from the burn from the laser, I guess. That's all I got cool. I'm just pointing it out. It doesn't really matter to me. Uh, it's just kind of cool. And uh, wow, I had so much fun. Can't wait to play this again. Thank you, everyone, for checking this out. Uh, please uh, subscribe uh, to the channel. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter if you want to go check that out. And we have some merch at our official Two Gun Pixie Zazzle store. So, uh, you know, go take a look. Maybe there's something there you'll like. Maybe not, but you won't know unless you take a look. So thank you very much, everyone. I'm your buddy, Big John and G. Two Gun Pixie presents...
Legendary Gaming, and my friends, I am out of here. <laughs> awesome game. Awesome.